Gary's Mods publishing tool, GMAT, is poop. And the command line is scary. We're gonna be using GM Publisher instead. But first, we need to do a little bit of setup before we get to that point. Let's get started. We need to create a workshop folder for our map. So start by making a folder where all the maps that you will publish in the future will reside. Next, make a folder that is your map name. Then, make a folder inside of that called Maps. Then, inside of that folder, make another folder called Thumb. This is how the tree of folders should look like. Now place your final compiled, packed BSP map file in the Maps folder. If you don't know how to pack your map, I got a video that you can watch on the top right if you need to. Next, we need to take some screenshots of our map. So hop into a single player sandbox game and turn your graphics all the way up to the max to get the prettiest pictures. Take out your camera and start taking pictures. Once you're done taking pictures of the map, you can find them in your Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod screenshots folder. We will need these for later on once we get the map onto the workshop. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. You will now need a thumbnail that people will see when they open up their map selection menu in Gary's Mod. Make a PNG file that is 128 pixels wide and 128 pixels high. You can use Photoshop, Affinity, Paint.net, GIMP, or any other photo editing software. Once you've created your image, place it in the thumb folder inside of the add-on folder we created and name it the same name as the map. Now we need to make a workshop thumbnail photo that people will see before they click on your add-on. I will show you both the still image method and the gif method. For still images, make a 512 pixel wide by 512 pixel high JPEG image. You can touch this image up with fancy text showing your map name if you like. Don't save this file where your add-on folder is located. Instead, save it somewhere that you can find it easier, such as your desktop or downloads folder. For GIFs, you can use a service like EasyGIF. Record a video and upload it onto the site. Crop it to 512 wide by 512 high and make sure that the file size for your GIF is under 1 megabyte. If you're having trouble getting it below 1 megabyte after compressing it, you can try reducing the resolution to 256 by 256. If you're making a GM map and plan for people to have NPCs walking around, I would recommend quickly generating a nav mesh. Open up the map in Sandbox and open up the console with the tilde key under the escape key. Look at the ground and type nav underscore walk underscore walkable in the console. Do this for every place in the map that you can't walk to, meaning any floating rooms that you have throughout the map. Next, type nav underscore generate and wait for that to finish. Then, save your nav mesh with nav underscore save. You can see if your nav mesh is generated correctly by typing nav underscore edit 1 and flying throughout the map to see if every area has those squares on the ground. Find your nav mesh file in your Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, Maps folder and copy and paste it into your add-ons maps folder. On the workshop? Wow! Okay! Wow! Download GM Publisher with the link in the description. This will make creating and updating workshop add-ons a lot easier than doing it manually through the command line. Once you install and open it up, you will be greeted with a page of your uploaded add-ons. On the left, you can see what add-ons you have installed, a downloader in case you want to download an add-on from the Gary's Mod Workshop, and an add-on size analyzer so you can get a good idea on what is taking up a bunch of space on your drive. Head to My Workshop and click Publish New. Here is where we create our add-on for the workshop. At this point, we should have the following. Our add-on folder with a maps folder inside of it, our maps in the maps folder and the file itself with no capital letters, a thumbnail that is a 128 by 128 PNG file in the thumb folder, our workshop thumbnail image that is a 512 by 512 JPEG outside of this folder structure altogether, or a GIF that is 512 by 512 and is one megabyte or less, and an optional nav mesh file. You can also put other files here if the map needs them, such as a Lua folder, but most maps don't need this, and I'm not gonna get into that for this tutorial. Click on the middle and select the add-on folder we created. If you go inside of it and see the maps folder, you've gone too far. We should now see our files pop up in the middle. Next, click browse on the top left and find the workshop thumbnail image slash gif that we created. It should show up on the top left once you select it. Next, we need to give it a title. Call it your map name so that you're not misdirecting people. Your type will be map and your tags can be whatever you want. Once you hit publish, give it a minute and then your web browser should pop up with the workshop add-on on Steam. If you're not logged into your Steam on your web browser, you can go to your Steam client, hover over your name and click on content. From there, click on the workshop items tab and then your new workshop add-on. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set, you're going surfing on the internet.
We can spice up our workshop page and make it look a lot nicer and give it some information. You can edit your description and title on the right side where the owner controls are. Now we can add images and videos to showcase on the top. We could choose files manually, but that would take way too much time. Instead, navigate to your Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod screenshots folder, control plus left click on all the images that you took of your map, and drag and drop them over the black box titled No File Chosen. You should see a list of image names pop up underneath where you dropped all the images. You will now need to save and continue and come back to this page in order to reorder the screenshots you've uploaded. If there's a video you want to upload, you can do so right here. Next, we add contributors to the workshop add-on you created if you have any. You have to be friends with them and they need to accept it manually. Once all of that is done and you're happy with how the workshop page looks, you can now set it publicly by changing the visibility right here. Remember how I told you to keep your add-on folder in a place that you wouldn't lose it? Well now we need it again. Go back to that folder and replace the .bsp file with your new one. Make sure that your map name is different from the one that is on the workshop. The reason being is that if a server owner puts your map on their server, people that download that new map will get an error that their map differs from the server, meaning that players will have to scour their downloads folder and delete the map. I will show you an example on how I name my maps with the following. Game mode prefix, GM, ZS, TTT, RP, etc. Followed by the map name itself, followed by a major and minor version count. For example, if I have V1A, my new map name would be V1B, then V1C, and so on. If there's a major update such as a complete overhaul that I've done for Verruckt, it would be V2, then V2A, and so on. You get the picture. Go into GM Publisher and click on your existing add-on. On the left, the directory should be the same as the folder we created in the first place. You can add some text in the change log to tell people what changed in this version if you so wish. Then, you click on the update button on the bottom left. 